Good afternoon, Chapel Hill family, and to those who may be watching this for the first time, I'd just like to say blessings to you all in this time that we're uh, having to stay at home and observe the laws that have been put before us for the pandemic. And uh, I know for me, it's been tough. I've done more yard work than I'm, I'm really wanting to do right now, but you got to do something. So I'm glad to have that to do. And but it's forced me to have to uh, do other things, things that I've needed to be doing for a long time. That's one, getting in his word. So today I just want to follow up on what I shared on the first Sunday that we observed the pandemic, uh, the streaming service that we had when I shared with y'all out of Psalms 91. And I want to go back and just read the first two passages of scripture that was there because it's, it ties in with what I want to share today. And in Psalms 91 verses 1 and 2 it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. On Him I lean and rely, and in Him I confidently trust. Today I want to... Uh, I feel like this ties in with uh, those first two passages of Scripture about it actually instructs us what we're to do to make that whole Psalms 91 come to pass in our lives. And that's trust in Him and, and seek to find Him and go to that secret place in Him. And I just confess to you, I've been walking with the Lord for many years now and uh, to to speak to the secret place in one's life and where they go to get along with God may look different than what mine is or yours. And uh, I think that's still part of the journey in finding the secret place uh, and what that looks like. And uh, to be able to convey that to you, I'll have to say that I would be probably uh, not well read or well schooled in that because I'm still on that journey and trying to find out myself. But I can also I can only say that I am still striving for that secret place and what that looks like and being alone with God and being in His presence. And that's really, really what it speaks to. And, and in these moments and these times and these circumstances that we're in, going to that place is oftentimes an uncomfortable place. I found in my own life that Sometimes when we get in the presence of God, I can't hardly handle it. It's so good. It's so powerful. And uh, recently that has happened with me. But let me share this scripture from Romans with you today and try to tie this in for you. It says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For the Spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption the spirit producing sonship, and remember that word sonship, in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself thus testifies together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are children of God. And if we are his children, and we are his heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him, only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. But what of that? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, this present life, are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us and for us and conferred on us. I want to go back to the, uh, the passage where it talks about us uh, being adopted. I think for me, uh, and maybe many of you can relate to this, we run around here doing all this stuff by ourselves. We try to uh, handle all of our problems by ourselves and we're running around like an orphan rather than a son of God. And that's part of my journey is learning what that looks like to be a son of God or to be a daughter of God. And uh, maybe many of you can relate to what I'm talking about. Oftentimes we, we look at our lives and maybe we gave our life to Christ a long time ago and we uh, somewhere along the line got off off path. We've been separated from God through circumstances or 
some of our own coping mechanisms to deal with our own pain in the circumstances rather than going to that secret place that I mentioned earlier. God wants us to find that place. He wants to spend time with us. It is there that we find that when we come to Him, we find our strength, we find that refuge that it's talking about in these passages of Scripture in Romans. And if you really don't know what God thinks about you, I encourage you to read the whole book of Romans because it tells you all about how He sees you and not how you see yourself or how the enemy is lying to you and telling you what you are. For many, maybe, maybe you're like I was for a time in my life. I wandered around like an orphan, not knowing the magnitude of this father-son relationship with the Lord Almighty. And again, I say I'm still part of the journey. I'm still doing that today. But I encourage you that it is in this place, in this book, the Word of God is where we hear from Him. That's where we enter into this presence because this, these words are living and breathing right now as I'm sitting here just speaking to you now. The Holy Spirit anointed the ones who wrote it and that anointing is still on them today. But you can find refuge in His Word. You can find refuge in your prayer closet. And I encourage you, if you don't, haven't started that prayer closet thing, getting along with God and coming to Him, don't re, uh, revert back to you just hand on everything. Get in that prayer closet with God. I can't stress that enough. Here's a fine example of what we're going through right now in these times is when we need to be in our prayer closet with God. If for no other reason to get us back to, to home, because that's where the home is, is in Him. I just encourage you today to do that and uh, give it to Him. Let Him be that father to you that maybe you've never had or experienced or that mother, that sister, that brother. He's all that. And uh, just know that he's good. He's not a guy who's strong fisted and he's uh, ready to pounce on you for something you've done. He realizes where we're at. He realizes we were born into sin and that we're not perfect. And that's why, because of what Christ did on the cross, there's grace to be found. And it finds us through our relationship in, in the Father, through Jesus. And, uh, and I just encourage you today, if, if you're watching for the first time and maybe you're not in church and you, you don't even know what this even means or what it looks like to know Christ, I just want to encourage you to know this. If you will confess these things, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, acknowledge that, and to uh, believe that He died and rose from the grave, and that you will confess your sins before him. He says in his word that he is faithful and just to forgive us. And he will, you will be saved at that very moment. It's very easy, but we make it so hard. Just ask him into your heart and allow him to forgive you and wash you clean. In his eyes, because of the blood that he was shed on Calvary, that makes us clean in him. And we start this whole relationship with him that I'm talking about. So I encourage you today, let him be your father. Let him be your mother. Let him be that friend that sticks closer than a brother. I encourage you to go back and read these passages of scripture in Romans. And for that matter, read the whole book of Romans. Just, it's like going to the table and eating a bountiful meal when you start reading about what he thinks about the body of Christ and you being a part of that body. So I encourage you today, give it to him. Quit running like an orphan and be a son and being a daughter of God. God bless.